So, as my excellent friend David pointed out, I put the uh, heat shield on backwards, mostly because this was all cocked out of whack, and it was like coming up right here. So I had to. So I was like, "That's not right. I can't get this. I can't get this to go right there." So. But now that he told me it was upside down, I'm coming back in here and booking it again. And so I got that twisted around and back into place underneath here, underneath the shield here. And then got this back on and put the heat shield back on the correct way. So, shout out to David. Thank you for letting me know the error of my ways as I'm working through and learning all this stuff here. Appreciate all your patience with me. And teaching me <clears throat> but uh yeah I'm also gonna go ahead and fix my door lock actuator swap that out since I've got the other one laying over there that pile of junk somewhere and yeah just a couple little small things today nothing too major door lock actuators are seem to be a fairly common failure on this car. This guy. All the rest will try to lock. And then as soon as I open the door, I can physically roll that one over. And this door still locked. It verily confuses the system and makes for a bunch of work on your part. Because now you've got big space. My best suggestion is to go to a. hopefully find a part out that you know has functioning door lock actuators and go from there. Or go to junkyards and start pulling door lock actuators off of them until you find a set that works. Um, some people say you can open them up and fix the motors in them. I haven't tried that yet. I've just found a decent working set and I've stuck with them. Um, I do have other sets upstairs. I suppose I should probably someday see if I can probably try to rebuild one of them. See how bad it actually is. They say what happens is, is the motor just gets gunked up with grease after a while and doesn't fully actuate anymore. So... Um, since I've got my good one back, we're going to go ahead and pull this one. Start by having to take out the door card, which is two bolts back here, one behind this, one up here underneath the handle, and then there will be two more down here. Once you've got all your bolts undone, you can pull on the bottom of the door card down where the little parcel shelf is on the side there and um, pull it out. Don't forget to unlatch the handle and the lock from their cables here. And then next we're going to go about unbolting the old actuator and getting it out of there. Which, if I'm not mistaken, should be three Torx 20s, and then this nut, which is right here, and then this bolt, which is down here. That Torx 20 head is really the uh, the key. I had to buy 
a whole extra set to get that T20 bit in there. They don't seem to be super common. So, at least in most uh, regular toolkits, they seem to go up to like Torx 15, and then they skip right over to 25. So, yeah, this has been great. Picked it up from uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts a couple of years ago. I use it all the time. It's a nice little ratcheting screwdriver. It's real small, gets into places pretty decently. Uh, it is kind of fat though. So yeah, take it with what you will. We're gonna go ahead and pull the rest of this off. Then once you have it all unbolted, you've got one final task to get this off. So right up there, and right over there, are two little guys that uh, clip onto the wires on the actuator, that clip onto these arms for the lock and the handle. You've got to undo those before that'll come out. So. It's just a matter of reaching up in there and getting them unclipped. They should push away or pull towards you. Um, I've reached in there with a flat head and got them sometimes. Um, you can pop this little peephole here and it will allow you to see up in there while you pull these, which can be helpful. Makes it a lot easier. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get these pulled and then we'll carry on. Don't forget to unclip the harness on your way out and you should be pretty good. Pulls right out and then the other one goes in the exact opposite way. Pretty straightforward. Before we go again, ahead and get too far and put this back on and whatnot, we'll just go ahead and... So, everything's locked. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go around to the other side, just make sure. We'll just, just quick run around. Yep, everything's locker room need. Security light is on. So, it's locked. And everything is now unlocked again. So, if your door locks are acting funny in your Celica GT or GTS, it might be time for a new door lock actuator. They can be kind of expensive from Toyota. Um, I believe they're like a hundred bucks or something like that for one of them. Um, I know you can get them from junkyards for between 15 and 30 bucks a pop. I've seen people selling them online for anywhere between, you know, 15 and a hundred bucks. So it just kind of depends on where you can find them. Uh, working and in good condition um, but otherwise that's pretty much it it's a real easy straightforward fix just takes a little bit of time and small hands so you've got Super a Japanese platform you've got an Australian actor <laughs> and he is marketing it to Americans that's how they got things the Subaru Outback? Yeah. You know, I've heard crazier stories. Think about it. Back in the 80s, the crocodile Dundee guy. Oh, uh, yeah. He was the guy in all the commercials for the Outbacks. Yeah, that's right. That's right. 
wild times. Wild times. Did you ever see the six, the uh, commercial for the sixth gen Celica with Eddie Murphy? Yeah. Ooh, I love my Celica. Ooh, I love my Celica. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, sporty. I love that commercial. It gets me every time. I love the seventh gen ones. Slow yeah. Man. Slow down, punk. <laughs> Slow down, punk. <laughs> or the cop. Red yeah. Celica, pull over. <laughs> it's already on the it's side the of the man. road. The best one is the mom with the kid. It's like, oh, honey, stop. Oh, honey, stop. <laughs> Those always kill me. I love it. Wow, in the very back. I've never been down here. <laughs> you haven't been down this far, huh? Yeah, wow, look at that yellow protege. That's got... It's a Mazda 3. It's got the dual tailpipes on it. Yeah. Row 30. Here we are. Yep, oh, there she be, in all her glory. Coming in on donuts, wow. That has brand new fog lights on it, look at that. Ooh. Brand freaking new nice. fog lights. It probably didn't have it like mine didn't, so that was one of the upgrades you did. Yeah. That's good to know, right off the bat they've done something. It's got the plastics. People are always after that yeah. piece right there. Yeah, these engine plastics for sure. This too. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. But they're in. Oh, oh. what would they do there? For this? Yeah, must have been. That's I think that could be. Might be able to be cleaned up though. But this piece is still clean. Yeah, definitely gonna take that. Uh, let's see if this thing will hold. We're gonna do a little more poking around here. Scored some OEM formats. Yeah. Alarm for Charles. A new leather side rest for armrest for his door. And that little piece of plastic up front that always seems to go missing and yeah. get lost. That'll leave with you with the back piece. For sure. But yeah. Pretty good haul for 40 bucks. No.